world of Disney. Shock full of history. All you have to do is <laughs> dig for the <laughs> facts. Yep, here we have it. A settler's hat. Now that's mighty important because if the settler hadn't come out here first, there would have been no cowpoke. And the settler almost didn't make it. <laughs> you see, he and the engine had a little argument over the same territory. So let's be fair and listen to the engine side first. <clears throat> Sounds reasonable. Gotta admit, he's got some good points on his side. Tonight, from the wonderful world of Disney, how the West was lost. at least what's left of them. That ain't much. Now, I got quite a bit to tell you about the Old West. Yep. <laughs> about the days of the pioneer, when it took brave men to come out here with mountains, rivers, deserts to be crossed. I'm sure you know what the pioneer's done. Because of him, the West was won. But I want to tell you how the West was lost. There once was a time when a man could see a moving across the lone prairie, a canvas wagon pulled by animals. The prairie ain't so lone today. These freeways going every which way. Hard top wagons raced by soft top food. Where herds of critters used to drink water sweet now herds of critters soak themselves in a chlorine pool where sand dunes made a picture so restful to your soul. Now the sands are blasted on the 17th hole. The peaceful glow of the starry nights has changed to neon electric lights. I can't help howling like a coyote pup. What happened to the spaces way out west, wide open spaces I love best? I'll tell you what happened. They're all filled up. Consarn varmints are right up to my doorstep. But I say, not one inch further. They shall not pass. This is my Alamo. Oh, 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 oh. But if you think they've just gone and messed up the scenery, take a look at what they've done to the poor old cowpoke. What do you really know about him? I'll tell you, all you know about him is what you see on one of them newfangled teleblasted vision sets. From them, you'd think all a cowpoke did was to keep a galloping around in all directions, hell bent for leather. Seeking refreshment at the nearest water hole. Extending a friendly hand to a passing stranger. Never came to town without his six shooters a blazing away like Gatlin guns. Maybe you folks think this is a true picture of the old time cowpoke, but it ain't the way I heard it. That's why I'm mighty pleased to tell you about the real cowboy. The cowpoke I know and respect. Now, to begin with, did you ever try and figure out where the cowpoke come from in the first place? Well, if you want to get at the honest truth about that, this here region is chock full of history. All you have to do is <laughs> dig for the <laughs> facts. Yep, here we have it, a settler's hat. Now, that's mighty important, because if the settler hadn't come out here first, there would have been no cowpoke. And the settler almost didn't make it. <laughs> you see, he and the engine had a little argument over the same territory. So let's be fair and listen to the engine side first. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. 
reasonable. Got to admit, he's got some good points on his side. On the other hand, engines or no engines, the settler's job was to settle. So he pushed on across the wide open spaces inspired by his motto. Uh, let's see. Uh, in row Philak, row Chubb. That's real Indian, ain't it? Oh. <laughs> mm. California or bust. So you see, it was on account of the settler and his cattle that the cowboy was born. And, like any growing boy, he had to have some schooling. And by that I mean the three R's. Riding, roping, and reading. <laughs> Only his literature comes bound in cowhide. Living cowhide. Now, anybody can read this one. It says, I belong to the Circle O. But cattle often change hands. And then you're liable to meet up with a <laughs> piece of printed matter like this. Here we have a complete, unabridged autobiography on four legs. Can you make head or tail out of him? Well, the educated cowpoke can. From the marks upon a steer, his history is clear to all the old experienced cowhands. Where you can tell where he was raised and the ranges where he grazed by following the story of his brands. He was born in old Wyoming on the triple clover bar, then auctioned off in Denver to the double walking R. Bought by a flying circle who kept him as a pet, then transferred to the Tumblin' X to pay a gambling debt. He sprayed the herd in Texas and was claimed by Rockin' A, then muscled by the smoke tree boys out California way. Bitten by a rattler, along the Rio Grande, then traded for some whiskey to a border outlaw band. They shipped him down the river to a pretty Paiute squad, and finally he was repossessed by a bank in Omaha. The bars and marks and slashes are all so very clear to the old cowhands who read the brands on the hide of a western steer. Yahoo! Yahoo! Well, so much for the three R's. Of course, all them brands were for the purpose of preventing a fourth R, namely, rustling. To do that, the cowpoke had to learn a fifth R, revolvers. Now, these equalizers gave him an even break against rustlers and robbers. That's why the law-abiding buckaroo was often called upon to help maintain law and order. That could be a painful job. See that place over there? That's where one of the most amazing incidents of this kind happened. Of course, it ain't much to look at these days, but put your mind back a spell. But it was all new and shiny, and its law-abiding citizens was plagued by Pistol Pete, the most pestiferous outlaw of the western frontier. Sure was a rough, tough, romantic breed, that old-time cowpoke. Not only punched bandits, <laughs> He punched cows, too, by gum. <laughs> uh, it used to be when you could gaze out across them endless prairies beyond this creeping junkyard to call civilization. Maybe you could see a lone cowpoke top one of them buttes out there, keeping an eye on his critters below. Howdy, stranger. Today, if you'd want to see an honest-to-goodness cowpoke at work, and with plenty of elbow room, you'd have to go to another western frontier. Only it's down south. Way, way down south. In Argentina. To get an idea how the two kinds of cowpoke compare, let's take our man here down to the wide open pampas of Argentina and see how he stacks up again one of them gaucho fellas there. Papa, Papa, she is the one for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call my baby cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I call my baby cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I call my baby cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Another reason why the West is going down the drain. Chucks, once we had giants out here. Nowadays, looks like they come in just three sizes. 33, 45, and 78. Now, my kind of cowpoke 
didn't sing songs to keep you wide awake and bleary-eyed. He sang to put you to sleep. As every old-timer knows, all four-footed critters gets mighty spooky and nervous after sundown. So, the minute them blue shadows started creeping across the valley floor, it was the most important part of the cowpoke's job to sing to them and keep them quieted down. His long lost love in the sky up there. So painful was his grief to see the varmints joined in on his sympathy. And that's how come to this very day, coyotes howl at the moon that way. Wonderful work.